So today we're on the Missouri farm. We have a delivery coming today. We are getting our fish today. And when I say fish, we stocked this pond um, a year ago. It's been a year, almost exactly a year to date. Uh, close to it within probably two or three days. Uh, we stocked a pond behind me here with uh, the uh, forage, or uh, yeah, the forage fish. Uh, we stocked it with uh, bluegill, uh, red ear, um, hybrid bluegill, uh, minnows, and uh, shiners, and then catfish. So as, as I said in one of my previous videos, you can go out there and look, we stocked over 15,000, close to 20,000 minnows and shiners, and 2,000 bluegill and red ear, and 300 catfish. So today, one year later, we are putting in our uh, predator fish. So um, exciting, you know, we decided to wait one year. I know a lot of people don't like to do that. Um, it's suggested that you do that uh, to let your forage uh, grow and have a, a one year spawning, <clears throat> excuse me. And so, you know, it's, it's hard to do because you want to use your pond, you want to fish it and stuff. You want to get those bass in there and whatever other predator fish you're putting in. But uh, we decided we're going to hold off and we waited and so, you know, this is it. You know, it's funny, it, it was a year ago, like I say, it was a year ago, um, probably, you know, within a few days. And if you go back to my video that day, it was cold, rainy, probably 38 degrees. And uh, once you know it, it's been beautiful here in Missouri. And this week we're here, it's been cold, rainy. And it's probably right now, I think the uh, feels like temperature is around 35 degrees. So as you can see, I'm bundled up. Um, here, here it goes again. Luckily, it's not raining. They, they didn't, uh, they had called for rain in the forecast and now it's just uh, cloudy skies. But uh, anyway, it's still cold and windy. Wind's about 11, 12 miles an hour at least. So it's cold, windy, and great day for delivery fish though. We don't have to worry about acclimating them. Uh, we're getting, uh, so we're getting bluegill, or not bluegill, I'm good, we're sorry. We're getting, um, we ought to put the bluegill in. Uh, we're getting, today we're stocking it with bass, uh, crappie. I know a lot of people say, Yo, what are you putting crappie in a pond for? Um, we're working with the hatchery here. Um, we're putting a couple other fish in here that will help control those crappie. We're putting stripers in here, which are sterile. And then we're also putting uh, walleye in here. So that should get, keep the... Uh, uh, crappie population in check and plus we're putting the uh, bass and crappie they're both the same size you know at this point um, so you know that should help everything keep in check here but we're not putting a lot of crappie in but we do like to add some crappie to the pond behind us and you know I, I love to eat crappie I love to eat walleye too so you know we can sustain walleye in here uh, they won't they won't uh, spawn but you know we'll just have to stock them every once in a while striper same way they won't spawn they're sterile uh, but they will get big, you know, they're say within probably five years they should reach 20 pounds or more and Especially with all the forage. I mean, we got so much forage in there. I mean, there's you know, the bluegill will spawn I mean, I've caught, you know, I went you know, last time I was here. I did a little worm fishing. I didn't video it, but Every cast I catch little bluegill, you know, anywhere from you know, one and a half inches on up You know, I mean, they're just every every cast, you know, you throw a, a bobber and a worm in there and you'd get something on your uh, on your line So it's gonna be an exciting day. So uh, you know, just follow along and uh, we'll uh, show them, uh, you bring them down here. I don't know if we're gonna have to, uh, I'm hoping to get the truck down here this time. Last time it was raining. Uh, we had a little rain last night, but everything's still dry. Um, so hard panned out here. So I think they could just drive the truck right on down to the pond this time. So shouldn't take as long. Last time it took us a lot longer because we had to uh, put everything in 50 gallon drums, you know, transfer it from the tank to the 50 gallon drum, and then go down there and transfer it from the 50 gallon drum to buckets and then release them in the pond. So this time we should be able to just bring the truck down there. So. Anyway, follow along. Thanks for joining, and uh, we'll see how this thing goes. Not having to do that. I've done it before, and it's an absolute mess. <laughs> Compared to the forage fish, I can't wait to see how big they are. Well, they're still going to be small, aren't they? Do what? They're still going to be pretty small, right? Probably two or three or four inches. Yeah. They're not going to be lunkers. Carol's like, how are they going to grow that fast in a year? <laughs> the bass is definitely going to take off. Yeah. The walleye is definitely going to take off. There's a lot of feed in here, that's for sure. Did, did we stock it during the fall last year? Yeah, yeah, it's been one year. So, nothing but the four years.
That's right. And then 300 tap in. That's a bunch easier than last year. <laughs> Do what? I said that's a bunch easier than last year. Oh, yeah. yeah. Put him in those blue drums that we use the UTV to bring it back. Oh, man. I, I tell you. My my normal work boots. The uh, heel went out. Of them. After almost two years of wearing them, no, constantly, non-stop, the heel the heel finally went out. I went, oh, you gotta be kidding me! <laughs> so I gotta get them resold here before too long, if I can ever get the time of day to be able to do it. So what do you got in this one? Uh, I've got walleye here. Walleye? Uh-huh. I'm going to bucket some water over into this tank real quick. Yeah, ironically enough, Bill, I was about ready to call you and go, uh, just pass the address. <laughs> <laughs> but then I was like, wait a second. Pulled up in here and I was like, didn't I just stop that? <laughs> Looks a little different than last time, doesn't it? Yeah. Pond well, we got a little bit more water in it. A little bit, yeah. yeah. Which is a good thing. Yeah, it's full of pond. Yeah, we start to dock. So one of these walleye? One person there, huh? Yeah. I think last year we had one carp. I think you had one carp and you're like, oh, I won't hurt anything. We got that? Yeah. Bucket full of walleye. Yeah. What I'll do is I'll flip my truck around. Unload yeah, right. no problem. There it goes. Those are grow good. Oh, yeah. They do pretty. Them and the northern fish, you know, walleye, pike, muskie. 
Those guys, yeah, they love this cold weather. Those would be stripers. What's on this side? This is their hybrid strike pattern. bigger ones at the same time or is it not a good idea if we got them yeah yeah we'll we'll give them we'll get them out but i didn't know you know if it's a good idea to stock bigger bass and smaller bass or Nice ones in there, wow. Some big ones in there. Wow. <laughs> Watch they get a picture of those. Wow. They're already pretty good size. My goodness. And the feet shrink as well. Because I think I think we talked about we possibly bait these fish for it. We're no, I haven't decided. You know, we talked about you know whether we will or not. Our neighbor does, but of course, right now, right now you're stopping to feed them, you know. Yeah. It's cold, so. In a way, I'm kind of leaning towards not, so they don't congregate in one area. All right, so here's the stripers. Wow. These are the stripers. Look at that. Wow. Uh, fingerling. Maybe some big boys in a couple of years. 